Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport. The airport team strives to make air travel accessible to all through the Sunflower Program, allowing individuals to self-identify when they need more assistance. More on the Hidden Disability Sunflower Program at CIRA.com. The city of Bloomington is studying the cost to dredge both Lake Evergreen and Lake Bloomington. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Tuesday, November 5th. I'm Ryan Denham, and this WGLT's The Lead Off. Now let's lead off with the city of Bloomington trying to figure out how it will meet future demands for drinking water. WGLT's Charlie Schlenker has more on the city's long-term planning. Bloomington gets its water from two lakes north of the Twin Cities, lakes Bloomington and Evergreen. Deputy City Manager Sue McLaughlin says there's no problem with capacity right now. That won't always be true. Well, we're growing, and uh, that creates a, you know an increase in the need for capacity. Um, so we're looking at our options. Bloomington does have a couple of wells as well as the lakes. McLaughlin says, though, those are not a long-term answer to the need for more H2O. There are certain chemicals in the water that need to be treated, and the output of those wells is very low in comparison to what it would take to treat them. So right now, they're just not being used. Adding to the pressure of the forecast of increased use by thirsty residents is the fact the capacity of the lakes is shrinking because of sediment. The city water plan estimates the lakes are losing close to half a million gallons of space per decade. We're looking at our options. What is the best option? And this, you know, obviously we already draw our source from Evergreen and Bloomington. So it would make the most sense to dredge since they've never been dredged. How much would that cost? We are actually actively studying uh, the cost to dredge both Lake Evergreen and Lake Bloomington. McLaughlin says the study may take six to nine months and the city council wouldn't get the issue and options to discuss until the next budget year. For the leadoff, I'm Charlie Schlenker. Here are some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. Polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight for the election. There are contested races for a congressional seat, an Illinois House seat, and an Illinois Senate seat, all representing parts of Bloomington Normal, plus a slew of McLean County board races. A 25-year-old man is facing multiple charges after a crash that left a woman dead Sunday evening in Bloomington. That crash happened near Fox Creek in bike roads. One of the drivers was arrested on reckless homicide and other charges. And Bloomington Ice Center manager Michael Hernbrot will be inducted into the Illinois Hockey Hall of Fame as a coach in January. Hernbrot says he feels positive about hockey's future in Bloomington with the arrival of the ECHL's Bison. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. Every so often on WGLT, we feature community servants and unsung heroes working to make Bloomington Normal a better place. It's a series we call More of That, Please. In this election edition of the series, you'll meet Georgine Chazelle from Bloomington. She just earned the Florence Pfeiffer Borer Award from the League of Women Voters of McLean County. Chazelle sits on the League of Women Voters board and also chairs an NAACP political action committee. Chazelle tells WGLT correspondent Braden Fogerson that it was an eye-opening experience for her in 2019 when she ran for Bloomington City Council and voter turnout was under 10%. Part of Ward 2 had residents that didn't care about voting, didn't understand about voting. They did not come out to vote, and that was almost half of the ward. So I lost. Not very, very much, but I lost um, because people didn't come out. So I created a saying, get up, get, get out, and go vote. So that's how I got involved in, in, in what I do now. I thought it was very important to educate people on the importance of voting and why we vote and why we need elected officials. I started attending state conferences with the NAACP or the NAACP and attending monthly meetings for our local branch. And then I got an opportunity this this year to attend the national convention, which I had never, never done before. And it was so exciting. And I learned so much. I was so ready to come back and get started. And I did. I came back Running, I'm telling you, I just, I haven't stopped. 
So, Georgine, for you to transition to the League of Women Voters portion of your work, um, they gave you an award. Oh, I didn't know you was going to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. They did. I was very surprised. Very surprised. Um, <laughs> I guess you would say my get out the vote, educating people on voting efforts that I've been doing since 2018. So I felt very honored, very honored, because that's a big award. And still, it's still exciting. Like when you mentioned it, I just get all googly and, you know. So it's still exciting to me that, wow, you are being noticed for your efforts. And that's not why I do what I do. I do what I do because it saddened me that people did not come out to vote when I ran. Not saying I, they had to, I had to win. That's not what I'm saying. They just didn't come out to vote. And from what I understand, talking to uh, Kathy Michaels and uh, the Bloomington uh, ele- uh, Election Commission, our local elections are our lowest turnout. That's sad. And that's our most important election. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about where blooming to normal stands today in terms of engagement, trending at least on pace, but Mm -hmm. even upwards of what it was in 2020. Um, Does that sort of, you know, news about that (laughs) excites you? I've been keeping uh, tabs on the numbers. And so, yeah, the other day I looked up our early vote and we was at 10,000 already. And I'm like, just in McLean County? Oh my God. So to me, that was good. That was Georgine Chazelle speaking with WGLT correspondent Braden Fogerson. You can hear their full conversation at WGLT.org. And if you have a suggestion for a more of that please feature, you can email us at news at WGLT.org. Support for more of that please comes from Onward Injury Law, providing legal services to personal injury clients in Bloomington Normal and Central Illinois. And before we let you go, a reminder that live NPR special coverage for the election begins tonight at 6 here on 89.1 FM with local updates every hour from WGLT's Charlie Schlenker. And until then, follow along on our live blog at WGLT.org. That's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. The show is produced by Rosalie Truback. You can subscribe to The Leadoff on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts. 